Hey, I'm John. I'm Nick. My name's Gina. Hey, and I'm Seb. And this is what's in our bag. Uh, Paul Lewis, the pianist, performing Beethoven's sonatas. This is number two out of, I believe, four albums that he released. And it's something I've been listening to a lot on this particular tour. I decided that um, I wanted to get into Beethoven. <laughs> I, I haven't ever. I haven't, it never really made sense to me. As a, when I was younger, I was a lot more into you know rock music. So I decided to give it a go. Uh, actually just on this tour. What I'll do is at night I'll, we'll get into our bunks uh, before bed because we're, we're on the tour bus. And uh, you know, I got a book, I'll open up my book and I'll put some you know, earbuds in and I listen to, like literally Paul Lewis uh, playing Beethoven sonatas. And I can't, re like, I can't read when I'm listening to it. I just immediately start paying attention to all these little details. And I think in like two weeks of listening, listening to uh, these sonatas, I've, I just can't keep up with the amount of ideas that I want to like, take from the music and, uh, and put into ours. It's been really cool to discover classical music like this at this point, but the thing I really love about the Paul Lewis performances is he's got a really, and I've tried, I've tried a number of different players, but he has this particularly sort of atmospheric touch or, or something. He's, he's, got a real, he's got a real sense of like feeling with the music that I like. I don't know if, you know, I don't know if he's one of the better ones or one of the worst ones, but the way he, the way he approaches the piano to me is very, it's very sensitive and it's very beautiful and it's captivating in a way that I didn't know I could still feel with music like this. I also decided to get into something new for me on this tour and I've got into Carl Heinz Stockhausen, which I was been checking out some new music in New York where I live, and all of it has been pretty unlistenable. <laughs> but he's one of the, the gods of that, so I've been reading a book about him talking about music, and yeah, I have never heard this one, but it had the coolest cover What's the and, and, the, and the best reviews on the back, so I'm gonna take a chance and make my cat listen to this. This is a record by Ramzi Pazuzu. This is a Finnish band, um, sort of black metal, but it's extremely like psychedelic. We played a festival in Barcelona a few years back, and that's the first time I saw them and like heard of them, and I was like blown away. I was like, this is the best band. It's like some of the best guitar tones. Um, they also play Telecasters or one of the guys has a Telecaster, so I'm <laughs> a fan of that. But yeah, this, they're incredible, so I was really stoked to find this. My first selection here is really hard to read. It's Blood Incantation. <laughs> I've heard their, I don't know if it's, if it's their first album, Hidden History of the Human Race. It's amazing. We saw them live in Brooklyn. It was amazing. They sound like uh, a spacier, morbid angel. Totally awesome. So this album, apparently, I haven't heard it yet, is all synth, which is cool coming from a band like that. So I'm very excited to check it out. And uh, yeah, Blood Incantation, all synth. I don't know what it's called. Time Wave Zero. Amazing. Sounds amazing. Rolling Stones, Black and Blue. I really want this for one song. Uh, it's got, I think it's the first or second track on this record is Hand of Fate. And I guess it was about a year ago, or a little bit over a year ago, Gene and I um, were traveling to do some recording for our upcoming record. And we just listened to that song over and over again. I, I can't, it's, I, it doesn't go much beyond that, but it's a really, really great uh, era of the Stones for me. It's got this really cool, open, bluesy, raw kind of sound that I, I don't know, I'm just a sucker for it. I 
chose um, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard live in London 2019 because I love these guys. I wear a King Gizzard shirt essentially 99% of the shows we play <laughs> after getting to see them live in France at This Is Not A Love Song? This Is Not A Love Song Festival. They blew my mind, so I've been a huge fan of them ever since. And we were on tour, and I was actually here for the show. We got to see them in Milan and in London on that tour, and I saw them in Central Park earlier before I went on that tour, so. Well, and the yeah. crazy thing about that show was, you know, I think we'd, we'd seen them, I mean, we'd, we'd been fans of them for, for a few, few years at that point, so and cool. we would see them play, you know, like reasonably large shows, 1,000, 2,000 people, and then all of a sudden we rolled up on the London show, and it was like you were watching the band blow up that night that whole tour was t i think it was 10 yeah. 12 000 people that night we saw him play in yeah they of. sold out and the whole crowd was like there i found this davy graham record so he's an english folk guitar player but he's one of my favorite guitar players in this style because his techniques range from like blues to bluegrass to folk to even like some Indian like raga kind of stuff and um, he's just like really incredible. Um, he's somebody, I don't know, when I listen to Jimmy Page like rip or do like improvs like live stuff I always think maybe he was influenced by Davy Graham. So here we've got Heldon III, which is the third album by Heldon, which is a French sort of, I guess, space rock band led by Richard something with a P, I forgot his name. I'm not an expert on them. I've only heard a band with friends. So I, when I saw this, I was like, I need to get into this. I, I love the 70s synth space rock. It's, it's not kraut because it's not German. This is gonna be sick. I think this is one of there are darker albums, from what I hear. So Heldon, 70s, space rock, get into it. Here's another one of my artists, the artist that I found uh, through the pandemic that I really, really have fallen in love with. It's, uh, uh, I guess you call it country music. Uh, his name is Coulter Wall. I've always been a fan of sort of traditional country music and Western music, sort of the traditions of, uh, you know, American roots music and, and how that pertains to country music. So a friend of mine turned me on to one of his records, I think it's called Imaginary Appalachia. He's just got the most amazing voice. Uh, you know, he's, I think he's a fairly, when he, when he had recorded that record, I think he was in his early 20s. And he sounds, he sounds like he's been around for 200 years. You know, he's just got like the deepest, richest, most soulful voice. Well, he just laughed and touched his gun and turning to me, he said, son, I bet you don't own a damn thing to your name. I got this Judy Sill record that I love, that I was introduced to me by a good friend of mine while on tour. A lot of this stuff I was like shown to me while like hanging out in living rooms, which is ended up being a theme. There's a great song on here, Jesus Was a Crossmaker, which is probably my favorite song on here. But yeah, her voice and her lyrics on this whole record are just like immaculately recorded and performed and just like, it's just beautiful singer-songwriter. Yeah, top of the list in that world. She's definitely a, a special, special voice for that. I found this Portal record, which I was pretty happy to find. This is an Australian extreme metal band. Um, it's extremely tense music. Um, <laughs> I don't even know really how to describe it. It's sort of black metal, sort of deathy. It's just, it's very tense and experimental and atmospheric and they're very mysterious. And I think this is a really cool, beautiful album cover. So I grabbed that portal. This is a Brazilian artist called Chimaya. 
and I heard of him when I was on tour in Brazil with another band many years ago. And he is apparently, if I remember correctly, he went to New York at some point in the 70s, so there's a bit of like sort of funk and R&B influence in his music. But he also was a member of some sort of like UFO space cult religion. <laughs> and the whole, I don't know if it's this album, I don't think it is, but he has an album called Rational, which, which was the name of the cult that he was a member of, which was, it was some 70s, like we're all gonna get abducted by aliens, kind of like end of the world cult. But the music is awesome, because it, it's, it's Brazilian, but it has this like definite American influence in it, which is a really nice combination. You know, awesome 70s production, really repetitive and hypnotic, and a really good time. This is gauze, equalizing distort. I'm not gonna say too much about it, other than if you've never heard furious, raw Japanese hardcore, this is about as good a place to start as you could possibly hope to have. It is just an insane record from an insane genre. I don't think there's a easily definable corollary between this and what Baroness does. But this, this record and, and a, a handful of records uh, from this era of Japanese hardcore were absolutely instrumental in the early days of Baroness when we kind of took all of the disparate influ influences that we had musically and tried to focus them into one sort of direction. <laughs> got Charlie Hayden Liberation Music Orchestra. Charlie Hayden's one of my f biggest influences by far. Great jazz bassist. He's like an Ornette Coleman seminal groups. And yeah, this album is amazing. I don't have it on vinyl, but I got to see a version of this band when I was in college at a thing called a I A G E J E International Association of Jazz Educators Conference. And it was just a mind-blowing concert, mind-blowing group. It's about like like revolutionary music, mainly from like Latin American culture, arranged and played by like this great band that Charlie put together. He's a cosmic influence on the world. I, I think he's a beautiful dude and amazing bass player and band leader. <laughs> I this um, William Omnibar record. So this is a Nigerian funk artist, and I've only so far listened to this compilation that came out I think in like 2013 called Who Is William Omnibar? So I have yet to dive into like a full length, uh, you know, just a single record, it's not a compilation, so I'm stoked to listen to this. It's really, really incredible stuff, and I don't know too much about him from what I understand. He's sort of was like a mysterious guy, um, so. Happy to find this. It would be really cool. When I finished high school, I was living in Argentina. I went to Washington, D.C. And <clears throat> I saw Fugazi soon after moving back there. There was a um, series of concerts called Fort Reno in D.C. And that's where my band started playing shows. That's where everybody played. And they would play there too. And the first time I saw them, I didn't really know what to expect. I had just moved back. It was completely mind-blowing. Like, the fact that it was like a, a hardcore band that could actually play their instruments, and it had this kind of message behind it, and it was so like, it felt like, I don't know, I've never been to church, but that's kind of what I think it felt like, you know? And uh, like, every song in this album is incredible. Like, there's not a stinker on here. This is an amazing album. And an incredible band, Brendan Canty, another huge influence on me as a drummer. And this is this this is for me is like a desert island classic here. So I love it. I, I spent it all. Thanks for uh, shopping with us. Thank you guys so much for having. Thanks for having us. I do